Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, I'm your host Shorty. Uh, it's been a while since I've been able to do one of these. Um, things have just been going crazy around around the homestead. Uh, car broke down, new master cylinder, power booster, brake lines, brakes, tires, a little bit of everything this time. Uh, I wanted to get this in um, and I've got it here. You'll be able to, I'll show it as I'm going right up here. Uh, this is a route survey done for a wind turbine, uh, wind towers, anyway, uh, that we did here a while back from uh, Port of Tacoma, or Port of Vancouver, Washington, to Dayton, Washington. About 280 miles from the port to the top of the mountain where the job was. Um, it was interesting. It was down through the gorge on Interstate 84 most of the trip. Then we jumped on Highway 82, I-82. Then we jumped on 730. And, uh, uh, oh boy. Highway 730, 7, or 512. Kind of wingle our way around through. And this just gives you an idea as to what the route survey, this isn't the routing, this is a route survey of the trip, okay? And just to go over it a little bit, um, we followed it to the letter. It was uh, incredibly helpful to know what was coming up. Uh, we did 71 loads, so after a while you knew it by heart. Um, but it was still good to have in the vehicle with you when you're, and always carry it with you. And if you're like me, with my paperwork for each load, I save all my routings. I save my route survey, if there is one for that load. And I staple them together and I put them in their own envelope. So I've always got it and I can always look back at it. Um... Because sooner or later, most of the time, these heavy loads go in the same road, same direction. And sometimes the guys doing the route survey doesn't see everything. Okay, so you, I, I've got three or four loads where each one has something different on it. And so you have to watch yourself on those and, and, and make a make mental fact about it. No one's perfect. No load is perfect except me. Uh, well, I'm I'm a wide load anyway, so uh, I should have flags and lights behind me. But uh, anyway, to get into this, it starts out when the truck leaves the port. You need to stop traffic coming from the right uh, because the loads are so wide we have to turn out and away from the port. It's just a standard two-lane highway. Uh, a main road, actually, is all it is. And uh, we go out Mill Plain Road. Now this, this part here is all in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, we right, right turn on Washington Road onto Highway 14. The tunnel, it's got, it's rounded. So you want to move to the middle, you run, run down the middle. It's no big deal, it's 18 feet high in the middle. The loads are 16.4, so it was no big deal. Uh, but you run down through the middle, through the tunnel. And then on the right, uh, in about a mile or two, onto Highway 205. Okay, that's that's the roundabout that goes around Portland, Vancouver. Uh, we get on to 205. There'll be another pilot car there that will run it with us. We have a steerman, or a, a, a chase. We have a high pole, which was me on all, every load. And then we have the third pilot for a few miles. Okay. And uh, he runs us from 205 to uh, Interstate 84, just across the uh, Portland-Vancouver Bridge there. And because nobody, nobody looks for us. I mean, it's just it's it's so stupid. I we're we're 300 feet long, huge white tube, and nobody can see you. I, it, it just boggles the mind, but that's the way it is in our business. Um. And then at Interstate 84, when you first pull on it, we lose that third pilot. 
he goes back and take, waits for the next load to come. And he sits there. That's all he does all day long. He does eight loads every day. Uh, so, and as, as you're going along through Portland right then, at that time out Troutdale, Oregon, where all the truck stops are, uh, at milepost 17, which is where the truck stops are, uh, they were doing some heavy construction at the time. So we were down to a uh, one lane road uh, with a narrow bridge. And uh, so we needed to take up everything we could, uh, take up two lanes across the narrow bridge because we lost a shoulder on it. And then uh, we need both lanes at the curves at the Multnomah Falls. The road makes a big S and uh, uh, with as long as we were, they were tight enough that we had to carry all, all lanes. So the rear pilot would block the left lane and I was out front, it didn't matter. We just ran it right down the middle. Um, then mile marker 31, there's a skinny bridge. And most of the guys understand skinny bridge. And there's a difference between a narrow bridge and a skinny bridge. A narrow bridge is the shoulder is a little bit shorter. You might need to move over. A skinny bridge, the guardrail is right on the white line, one foot maybe. Okay, so you got a skinny bridge, which means you have to take the center of the lane. There is no shoulder to play with. On a narrow bridge, it can give a uh, three foot, four foot. You 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 got some play room there, but a skinny bridge is usually right there on uh, on the line, so you don't have much room, even hardly walk if you were walking across the bridge. And on Interstate 84, surprisingly, there's a lot of skinny bridges. Uh, Milepost mile 31, 35, there are skinny bridges. The S curves at the Bonneville Dam, and then you go into a tunnel, which you have to take down the middle. Uh, Milepost 44, uh, between 44 and 45 are the railroad trestle and the scales. Uh, the railroad trestle is no big deal. It's 17 something high, but there's a bounce to it. So you have to slow down a little bit to go under it so you don't bounce up and hit. Uh, and then you have the state scales, the DOT scales. Uh, mile marker 52, there's a wall on the right hand side. Uh, and it's, it, it's not tight, it's four foot off, but still when you come around the corner there, you can bleed over into it a little bit, so you want to carry to the left a little. Uh, another skinny bridge at the 63. Uh, and then the Town of Hood River. Uh, you have two busy on-ramps, and these things are constant, almost 24 hours a day. Um, people coming and going, it's short on-ramps, so they're not up to speed yet, so you have to watch yourself. Um, and you make sure you let your truck know behind you what's going on uh, at something like that. You let him know that there's two cars coming up, you know, so they know what's coming on at them. Uh, Mile post 80, uh, another, again, short on-ramps, uh, and then two skinny bridges after that. And when you're on a job like this one here, you get to know where they are, but it's still, um, and they were, they were, those are skinny the right through there. The, the guardrail on the left and the right are right on the white line. They, they didn't widen them. They widened the lanes, but they didn't widen the bridge when they rebuilt uh, mile post 95, another skinny bridge with a second one about a mile on down the road. Now, I'm not sure why they wrote that out that way. It should have been at the 96, there was another one, but they did it that way. Uh, mile post 148, okay, from the 96 to the 148, there's not a whole lot out there, it's just get and go. Uh, you got one little hill to go over, uh, it's nothing much, but. You just sit and travel. There's another skinny bridge. Uh, 137, a skinny bridge, and it's a long one, crossing the Arlington Bridge there at Arlington. Uh, by the way, if anyone... Never mind. It's A, a musician was born there and is buried there. Um, and anyway, if you ever go through Arlington, Oregon, you can stop there and see the little plaque that's made up for him. And the park that's named after him. Uh, 
then we have to take exit 179, which puts us on Interstate 82. Uh, and that takes us to exit 1 at Umatilla. There we pick up a third pilot, and they're there to run blocker out front uh, all the way to Dayton. And once we get to Dayton, they cut off and they go home. Um, a third pilot will probably be out front, depending on what the driver wants. Well, they were always out front because we needed double going through a couple of these little towns with two-lane roads. We had to make some 90-degree turns in some, some of them. Uh, and it's just things that you'll get to know. But uh, I, I, I'm not going to go through all of this. Uh, my, my, uh, once we were on Highway 730, and high, uh, where it ends and Highway 12 begins, it's a 45-mile-an-hour zone. Um, oh, oh, the the big one, I guess, on this on this whole run was at uh, on Highway 730 at milepost 193. There's a rock face. Uh, the local chip truck drivers there called it the can opener. Uh, if you got too close to the shoulder, it would cut through the side of your rig. I mean, it it angled out like this i mean it was sharp and it was tight and it it made you it actually came into the lane uh, uh at one point around the tight corner so we would go way up ahead half a mile stop traffic when it cleared the truck would come on through and we we didn't really have any problems with anybody trying to get around us or in that big of a hurry because there were so many loads going there were 500 towers going to this uh to this farm and so they got very used to us seeing us there. But uh, uh, that's really how this looks as far as a route survey go. Now, this isn't the routing that was issued by the state. This was actually done by another pilot. Uh, in fact, he was the pilot and the driver that I was with. Uh, uh, they, they did this routing or this uh, uh, route survey so people would know because there are so many skinny bridges uh, the tight turns in Walla Walla, uh, 12 miles of four lane through Walla Walla made it real nice because we were able to take the shoulder and the lane and if people could fly on by us. Uh, although most of the time we were running at speed so they, they, they weren't having a hard time getting or having to get around us. Uh, a lot of overhanging branches through the town of Dixie. Um, at uh, a short two short skinny bridges uh, both on each side of the little town of Touche and it's a follow 40 mile an hour zone but uh, it goes on uh, you know have your have your signs and your lights and your handheld ready to jump out and stop traffic especially going through Dayton uh, there's a we have to make a 90 degree turn so the 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 back has to come around so we you take it really slow and we were we were one of the shorter loads on the on the this run uh we weren't the we weren't the blades they were huge the, this was these were the large largest ones and in fact I'll put a link in the bottom of this to my video of the turnaround that we had to do on this on this load where we had to come to a spot, turn around, and then go back eight miles to start up the hill because we couldn't make the turn to go up the hill. So we had to go eight miles for this big circle. And they had put six or seven of us all together in this circle, and then we'd head out from there. And I show a, a short video, <coughs> excuse me, a short video of a couple of the, the uh, blades going by. Uh, and showing how long they are and these are the big boys these aren't the the little short ones like some of the ones down in southern california are uh these are huge northwest uh i i don't know what they're called but they're they're special kind for the northwest up here um uh but they're huge the towers are 160 feet taller than most of the ones in southern california that you see around palm springs uh, they put out uh, extreme amounts of, of power when they're up and running. And by the way, it takes six hours to put together a tower if all the pieces are right there in front of them. Uh, to set the base, set the ba the first piece, center section, top section, the nacelle, and the blades. Six hours, one day, they're done. 
if everything's right there with them. And then uh, the only thing left then is the electricians to go in and hook it all up. But this was just to give you an idea of what a route survey looks like. Like I said, most of this I'll have highlighted right here. Um, and you'll be able to read along with it and see what it is. Uh, as, as is stated on here, a third, third pilot should stop traffic, but people on Highway 12 are stupid. Um, he or she, the pilot, will need to help control it. Uh, and it's true. We had so many close calls up there on Highway 12. Uh, it's like they don't care. Um, most of them, they wanted these towers in there. They wanted the power. They wanted this green technology. But they just didn't want to have to put up with us. So uh, they did some stupid moves. Um, one lady in a car tried to go underneath the tower. And uh, she was immediately arrested. Uh, I guess one guy on a motorcycle went underneath one of the blades. And uh, he got five years. Uh, he's still in jail. But... Uh, it's, it's interesting what people will try to do on these just because they, they don't want to lose a minute or two. Most of the time it took longer for us to get through after something stupid like this happened than what would have been there if, if they'd have just let us go. But anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to do for this time. Uh, my next one, I hope to get it done in the next couple of days, will be an actual route cert, a, a uh, routing from the state. Um, I've got a friend of mine that's sending me one, uh, and it covers from uh, Oregon all the way to Minnesota. So, and it, it'll show how each state is wrote up and how to read each one. Um, it should be quite interesting. Uh, it shouldn't be too long, but knowing uh, Idaho and um, uh, South or North Carolina or North Dakota, excuse me, um, if I remember mine correctly, they are so strange. Uh, they really are. I, I know the one I did up to International Falls, Minnesota from Oregon, uh, going through uh, North Dakota, they had not put down all of the bridges we needed to go up and over. They put one, and there's 14 of them. So uh, you have to be ready. Uh, I know I broke off uh, three stingers off my high pole on that load uh, because the, according to all the sheets, including the state uh, bridge heights, were so far off. And uh, I, I hit almost every one of them, and we had to do an up and over, up and over, up and over. Uh, luckily, I stayed out far enough in front, and uh, we were able to get it done. But... Still, you got to really watch out for that one. Uh, North Dakota seems to be the worst as far as putting down anything in their permits. Um, but uh, uh, it's fun. Uh, we had fun. This was a great run. You got to you get to know your drivers, your pilots, everybody on the load. And uh, taking a day off was no problem. Someone else would cover for you, or you got extra runs if you wanted. Um, usually, it was one day over come back wait the next morning you go back again and uh, we were doing every other day uh, so it was it worked out perfectly and then every now and then uh, they would shoot me over to a little town called Boardman Oregon where the nacelles and the blades came in uh, they came in by rail the towers all came in by ship and um, I would run over and I would do a, ta a, a blade from uh, Boardman to Dayton, which was only a hundred and I think it was 126 miles, uh, but it paid uh, for a full day. It was a day run, um, so the the pay the pay was quite good. It was just a while getting paid. It, it's 30 to 60 days on a lot of these, and it it made it tough uh, making sure the uh, gas bill got paid. But anyway. Uh, I'll uh, get out of here. Uh, I hope to talk to you next week and we'll go over an actual routing from some of these states and uh, be able to read those and we'll go go through those. I know I was asked to do that. Uh, be sure and like and subscribe.